gotta love this. By late March, the beginning of the saltwater season is in sight in northern New England. While many fishermen are content to wait for April and the opening of the haddock season, for some, the cabin fever is so severe that leaving it untreated, even those few days, is simply too much. Fortunately, the Eastman family in Seabrook, New Hampshire, knows a remedy, the Acadian redfish. Redfish are a small, slow-growing fish that lives in the cold, deep waters of northern New England. They are the only member of the rockfish family in the Atlantic Ocean, compared to the more than 50 species in the Pacific. What redfish lack in size, they make up for in abundance and with their firm, sweet fillets. When I arrive at Eastman's docks on a beautiful Tuesday at the end of March, I find the Lady Marily Ann 3 packed with anglers playing hooky and eager to wet a line in salt water for the first time in 2021. Now, how long have you been the uh, the captain of the, this is the Lady Marily yeah. 3? 40 years. The all-day captain for 40 years. Been different boats along the way. How many boats does uh, Eastman, is, makes up the Eastman fleet? We have four party boats, and we have three six-pack boats. Okay. Oh, yeah, great. Three six-pack boat runs off the dock. A lot of people love the Reds. We're full tomorrow. I mean, I, I would not have thought that there would be, you guys would sell out for this type of fishery, because it's... To us, down further south uh, on the Cape, you don't hear as much about them. They don't have much bottom for redfish down no, there. <laughs> all sand down there, yeah. So we started fishing from about 20 years ago, and it really, people really like them. Probably the best eating fish out here, in my opinion. So. Oh, no kidding. So, for the redfish, what kind of, you're looking for rougher bottom out there? Hard bottom, yep. Okay. Hard bottom this time of year. We're running about 21 miles. Okay. It's about an hour and a half. And what kind of rig? I haven't rigged up yet. What the. Uh, Pretty simple, the better? Or? Basic basic haddock rig, cod rig, sinker on the bottom, two hooks above it. Any smaller size on the hooks or? Some guys go with the fours. I think fives are good for anything. Oh, perfect. So. I got some of both, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go rig up now. Captain good. Phil, thank you so much thank for you. having us out here. Thanks man. a lot, guys. To, uh, to load up. The rigs are simple. A double surgeon loop for the sinker and a pair of dropper loops for the hooks. This is like your basic bottom fishing rig doesn't matter if it's sea bass or haddock, or in this case, Acadian redfish. Take a nice length of leader. I've got 40 pound test seaguar inshore here. We're fishing around rocky bottom. And that seaguar inshore is a really, it's one of the most abrasion resistant leader materials. So that's gonna be perfect for this type of bottom. And you start with double surgeon's loop. It's gonna handle your sinker. Though each one takes only a minute or so to tie, I tie a half dozen, so should I lose some on snags or tangles, I can be back in the water in seconds. Just that minor prep work can have a major impact on how much vacancy remains in my cooler at the end of the trip. Uh, Jim, how much? dollars. Got it. Thank you. The pool is an essential part of every party boat trip. Adds a little extra element, you know, a chance to uh, go home, basically pay for your trip. So five dollars for this one. Just takes one drop, basically cover the entire trip. Ready to go, man. On a headboat, the sound of diesel slowing is a call to action. It signals the arrival to the fishing grounds and time to get down to the business of filling the cooler. Can't wait. Since my first time on a party boat, it's a sound that's filled me with nervous energy and excitement for the fishing to come. Make that first drop. I've got 16 ounces of lead here, just a simple high-low rig, two dropper loops, and 5-0 Gamakatsu octopus style hooks. And I am late in getting to the bottom. Looks like people are already reeling up some fish. Oh yeah. 
was this 50 pound test. Seaguar Smackdown braid, nice small diameter. It's got plenty of guts for what we're doing here. This can handle just about. <laughs> well, we're halfway down. There we go, it's bottom there. Oh man. Everybody's coming up with fish, getting knocks right away. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Man, you gotta love this. So nice lightweight rod here, this uh, Tsunami Carbon Shield 2. It's got a lot of backbone to it, but it's also really lightweight. I mean, this is handling 16 ounces of weight, no problem. So, and still plenty of sensitivity in deep water with that much weight. All right. Here we go. That's six inch, right? Oh, I don't. There he is, man. It's Acadian redfish. It's the, uh, I haven't caught that many of them, but that's what we're here for. All right. A lot of room, a lot of room left. Hopefully he won't be alone in there for long. On our way, on our way to a good fish dinner. Redfish reward the anglers who stay at the rail throughout the trip. Oh yeah, that's two guys. That's a, that's a decent day. At the end of the day, the heaviest coolers belong to the fishermen who spent the most time with lines in the water. Helping anglers keep those lines untangled and fishing are the mates of the Lady Marilyn, like Nicole so, Gagnon. This guy's good. Nice one, Glenn. Yeah. That's a beauty. So to at least cut down on your tangles, what are some things you can do? Yeah, generally speaking, we only carry one size weight, so that way everyone is kind of floating and drifting at the same rate. But if one person's using a six ounce weight and everyone else is using a 16, he's gonna be tangled up all day. Oh yeah. Um, real important also that when your line goes slack, a lot of people, their line goes slack and they say, oh, someone's got me. But you wanna reel up with them because when you have slack line, your line ends up floating around and then you end up in six tangles instead of one. It makes it a lot easier for us to untangle. Also, a lot of people like to try to add all sorts of extra things. They're wanting to put beads on and put swivels on and put whistles and glow sticks and that just makes tangles way more difficult. So you spend more time tangled up, less time fishing. With a lot of the fish that we catch up here, it's just a small piece of bait, bear hook is the most effective way. So the more bells and whistles you have, the more tangled up you'll probably be and the longer it will take to undo those tangles. And then it's a lot of bottoms, a lot of sticky bottoms, so you end up losing all that gear that you just spent money on yeah. that you don't need anyways. <laughs> the fishing is steady throughout the trip, and it's not just redfish coming over the rails. Cusk are the most common bycatch, followed by out-of-season haddock, but the most interesting catch has to be the half dozen wolf fish that come aboard. Oh, dude. The gnarly teeth and powerful jaws of the wolf fish are designed to crush hard bodied prey like lobsters and sea urchins. Their blood has a natural antifreeze that allows them to stay active in frigid waters, and they form bonded pairs during their spawning season and possibly for life. They're also protected their numbers having dwindled due to overfishing and destruction of the seafloor habitat they rely on by draggers. Too soon, the day comes to a close. Captain Phil announces that it's time to bring the lines up, and he points the 90-foot boat back toward home.
By the time we return to the dock, I'm already making plans for how to prepare the beautiful Snow White fillets resting in my cooler. But most importantly, my cabin fever is broken and my saltwater fishing season has begun.